So I'm going to give you a quick tour of alicekeeler.com slash epic rubric. When you go there, you're going to notice that it's going to prompt you to make a new copy. You will need to be logged into your Google account. Yes, make a copy. There we go. Okay, so once you're in there, what you're able to do um, is set up your rubric. And so it's set up here to have a four-point scale. And what you should notice is that it does not say a 3 is a 75% and a 2 is a 50%. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, maybe a 2 is you know, your average, so what would you put for an average score? Uh, so if you think about this more as being A, B, C rather than 4, 3, 2, mathematically this is going to come out better. These are changeable, so if you don't want 85% to be proficient, maybe you only want 70%, or maybe you'd like it to be 90. You can just quickly and easily change it by clicking one time on the cell and start typing and changing your number. So however you like to have that. The other thing that you're going to notice, you can up here at the top put your assignment. This is my assignment, whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, it does show you that 100% that all the weights work out. And so you'll notice that it automatically I have four criteria here and the weighting is already 25% for each. So what I do is I just click one time where it says criteria one, and I say, used a pencil, and ha oops, has a header. And maybe you wanna uh, use standard 4.5, demonstrates critical thinking. So if you're different categories, what if you wanted a fifth category? All you need to do is come right below and just start typing your fifth category. Standard 2.76. And it's going to automatically rebalance the category. So now they're all worth 20% instead of 25%. And if I added a sixth one, notice it rebalances the percentages again. But it weights them all equally. And you'll notice that it still adds up to 100%, but using a pencil and using critical thinking should probably not be weighted the same. So if I wanted to demonstrate critical thinking at 30%, I just click one time and type 30, and it's going to change it to 30%. Then up at the top, you'll notice, oh, it all adds up to 113. So I am going to need to take off 13%. So let's see what happens if I make this 3%. 3.3, close enough. There we go, 100%. Uh, so then I can adjust each of those categories to so what percentage I want the category. I can just add new categories here at the bottom. It automatically updates. Then over here, you're going to want to have a description at each level. All you need to do is click one time, don't double click. If you double click, you're going to see my formula, which is going to be wonky and you don't want that. So just click one time and then type something. Used a pencil. Mostly used a pencil. Has pencil near it. Now whatever your criteria are, you just click one time and just start typing. Header is in the upper right hand corner. Alright, so this just allows you to go ahead and set up your rubric just as you would uh, for anything else. Now notice here at the bottom though, I have tabs. And these different tabs do different things. So here on the roster tab, you can actually start filling in student names. So put my sister in there. Alright, so I'm able to put in the student names and then you'll notice along the bottom there's a directions tab a mail tab, and then you go to the student tab, and what this is going to do is you'll notice on the student it automatically populates the name of the first student in your roster. Go to the next student tab, notice that it's populating the names from the roster automatically. So all you have to do is when Joe Cougar turns in their work, you open up the spreadsheet and you, for each category, you're like, well, used a pencil, three, has a header, one, up, oh, no, standard 4.5, demonstrate critical thinking, standard 2.3.2, and then you put on here, it is important that the header is located in the upper right-hand corner. 
know, whatever comments you want to give that student. So now I'm able to assess each student against the rubric. I just chain again, I click one time in the cell and I change it. So if it was a four, I click on it, change it to a two, back to a four, whatever I need to do. And it automatically calculates their score. And you're going to want to give them comments because if you go back to the roster tab, back to the roster tab, you'll notice that it will put their score there. Points, if you 100 points possible, let's maybe say this is only worth 30 points. So now I know I'm going to put a 24 in the grade book. Let me make that bigger. All right, I can change the points possible on the roster. And so then it's going to automatically multiply their percentage, percentage by the points possible so I know how many points. And it puts the comments that I had given the student onto that roster tab. And then notice along the top, it's going to populate the different categories that you had put on the rubric. And so I can see for each student how they were evaluated against each criteria, the score I should put in the gradebook, and their overall percentage. Now if you really want to get crazy, you want to make sure that you put the email addresses in for each student because this is actually set up with a mail merge. So you go to the mail tab and you want to change a few things. So here where it says put teacher name here, you want to change that to your name. And then scroll down and the whole thing is already set up. You don't have to change anything else other than putting your name on there. And then you're going to run the Val merge, mail merge. And once you run that, it's going to email each student their score and their comments and how they uh, scored on each category.